Welcome to Against the Spread, where we pick games for you against spread. I started the season really good at doing it. Recently, not so much. But g has been steady and consistent, so when in doubt, listen to his picks. Uh, let's get right into the Thursday Nighter, uh, where we've got the two exciting quarterbacks, two MVP candidates, uh, two guys that aren't that much taller than me. Uh, Arizona goes to Seattle. Uh, Kyler Murray versus Russell Wilson. The line starting at five and a half has come down to three. Big difference. Is that enough of a difference for you, g it, yeah, I think it makes a huge difference in terms of uh, who I who I think about picking in this game and how I think about picking this game. Um, you know, despite Seattle's struggles during the last few games, it's really hard for me to imagine that they're going to lose three games in a row. Um, you know, despite the fact that the defense is awful and uh, Russell Wilson is turning the ball over uh, way more than we expect him to 10 times in the last four games. Uh, that said, the Cardinals are playing amazing football. I mean, we saw what they did against the Bills, the, you know, pretty miraculous catch, but they had to come back from a significant deficit to do so. Uh, they've won their last four games. Kyler Murray's playing MVP type football right now. Um, and if you remember back to the last time that these two teams played, the Cardinals had to come back from a big deficit and they beat Seattle um, in overtime by a field goal. And and that's kind of the point that I'm getting to is that these teams play each other close. All NFC West teams tend to play each other close. And so I'm going to go with the Cardinals thinking that it'll be the exact same type of outcome. If Seattle wins, it's three, but I honestly think uh, it's going to be the Cardinals who take this game. Yeah, I agree. I'm with the Cardinals. And it's to me, as much as it is about Kyler Murray and what he's doing, it's also about Seattle's defense and what they're not doing. Uh, and that's getting stops. And, and Kyler Murray, um, you know, has really announced himself in the MVP conversation. Uh, he's got at least one passing TD and one rushing TD in eight of the last nine games. His numbers right now are better than Lamar Jackson's were at this time last year. Lamar Jackson obviously was the MVP a year ago. And Kyler Murray might be the MVP this year, maybe. Um, it's a little early to say that, but, you know, his first QB with 10 rushing TDs, uh, you know, since Newton in 2015. I, I just see him after, you know, what's been an up and down Bills defense, but, you know, a talented Bills defense, he kind of shredded them. And, you know, Seattle, even though they've made some trades to, to fortify that side of the ball, aren't nearly as talented on defense. And so I think Kyler and, and – and, and co put up some big numbers and I think they win the Thursday nighter. Um, I mean, I don't know if we're gonna see as much offense in the next game, or at, at least maybe from from one of the teams we might. Uh, Cincinnati goes to Washington. This is basically a pick em. Washington at home is a minus one favorite, open as a pick em. It's moved slightly to Washington. Uh, where are you going? This is this? an interesting one because I, I love the Alex Smith comebacks. Story. It's it's definitely one of the best stories in 2020 and a year where we need really good stories. And um, I think the Washington offense is probably better than uh, what we've seen from the most of the year with Smith under center. I mean, he probably isn't going to throw the ball 50 times uh, every week like he did against the Lions. But I do think that they have a little bit more to them with an experienced passer uh, like Alex Smith. But I'm more willing to bet on Joe Burrow than I am willing to bet on Alex Smith. And so that's the way I'm going to go here. I think the Bengals can go into Washington and get a win. And I think it's going to be because of uh, their rookie quarterback. I agree. And I think Joe Burrow probably will throw it 50 times. And I think the Bengals will be happy with it. And, and the Bengals are not great. Neither is Washington. But the Bengals have been really good against the spread six and three against the spread we kind of look at them as those you know terrible terrible bangles of, of previous years and they're somewhat competitive and at least competent things that i haven't been able to say about washington for long stretches this year so i'm actually surprised that even though it's in washington that the Bengals aren't favored because just watching the two teams um you know the Bengals have been much better and much more competitive than most football games so i see them winning this one um, and I wouldn't be surprised if they, if they win quite comfortably. So I'll certainly take them uh, as a dog. Uh, Atlanta play much better of late. They're only four and a half point dogs going to New Orleans. Now, a lot of that is potentially because Drew Brees, uh, you know, with 
broken ribs on both sides and a punctured lung will not be playing quarterback. I'm not even sure how he played any snaps after um, he got hurt. Uh, let's be honest, James Winston is probably going to be taking the snaps uh, for the Saints. Um, their offense hasn't been all that explosive outside of Alvin Kamara. So maybe a, a bigger arm in the quarterback might unlock things or, you know, famous Jameis might throw it to the other team. But this started at seven and now it's four and a half. Um, who do you like in this one? At seven, I was definitely leaning Falcons. And I, obviously Drew Brees being out of the this game and, and out of the lineup for what seems will be a couple of weeks is a huge factor in that. And we have no idea what Jameis Winston is going to look like under Sean Payton. There is probably reason to expect he won't be as turnover prone as he was in the past because of the coaching of Sean Payton. But uh, kind of like uh, I mentioned with Washington, I'm not willing to bet that Jameis Winston is going to come out here and, and do the same things that Drew Brees or even close um, was doing um, before he got injured. And like you mentioned, the Falcons are playing really well under Raheem Morris. Morris, they've they've won three of their last four games, and they've done so in pretty dominant fashion. And this has been a rivalry in past years, uh, which has given us some pretty close games. So because of Drew Brees being out and because the Fa Falcons are playing better, I'm going to take the underdog Falcons. I'm actually going to take the Saints because I think this is less about Jameis and more about Sean Payton. And he's proven when it was T Teddy Bridgewater a year ago, that he can manufacture an offense around whoever's playing quarterback. And quite frankly, he's kind of had to do that with Drew Brees because Drew Brees now is is a shadow of his former self. Uh, that defense is starting to play better. We've seen that in the last couple of weeks. They've obviously got Michael Thomas back into the swing of things. And if, if a quarterback isn't going to be MVP, Alvin Kamara might be that guy. Um, and he's still going to be there. He's still going to to be healthy so I, I like the saints I, I think the line factors in for the fact that breeze isn't there because if breeze is playing this line is probably eight eight and a half nine and so i'll take the the four and a half um for sure I, we always have a big line that really really makes me nervous this is the one minus 10 for pittsburgh who's still undefeated going to jacksonville um where are you leaning on this one the Jaguars definitely deserve props for um, hanging with the Green Bay Packers last week as the biggest underdogs of week 10. Um, and, and they definitely got me. I, I can't remember if you took the Packers, but um, uh, I definitely lost that game. And here we are again, and the Jaguars are the biggest underdogs of the week. Um, and here we are again, I'm picking against them. Uh, there, there are many reasons why I'm going to do this, but the Steelers' ferocious front seven is reason enough for me to do it. Uh, the Jaguars are again going to be starting rookie quarterback Jack, uh, uh, Jake Luton, sorry, and and the guy struggled last week. Um, despite the fact that they covered in Green Bay. Uh, but I think he's really going to struggle against a much better defense uh, that the Pittsburgh Steelers have. And I feel pretty comfortable taking the Steelers by double digits. I do as well. I mean, I think if this was the Chiefs, I'd be like, oh, yeah, 10 points. Easy. No problem. Uh, well, the Steelers are as good. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll see in potentially in the AFC Championship game. But the Steelers this year have been as good as anyone in football. And, and so is Ben Roethlisberger, another MVP candidate, a legitimate one. The last three games, zero INTs for Ben, nine TDs. So, so yeah, 10 points is pretty good. I know the Steelers are undefeated 9 0, but they're also 7 2 against the spread. They've been winning uh, games comfortably and handling business. I think they do that against Jacksonville. And yes, Jacksonville bit me uh, last week, but I, I think the Steelers handle this game. Uh, let, let's, let's stay with teams uh, in the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, Philadelphia, not favored, also not undefeated. Uh, uh, underdogs <laughs> going to it. Cleveland. Uh, yes, uh, the, this is a relatively close line considering, you know, the Browns only have three losses and the Eagles only have three wins. Uh, three and a half points for the Browns. Uh, who do you like in this one? Neither of these teams played very well uh, over the weekend. And I think we could factor uh, the weather into the reason why the Browns weren't able to score more than 10 points. But we can't blame the weather on the reason why the Eagles are so bad. And that comes down to offensive identity, I believe. I don't know that the Eagles, Doug Peterson, Carson Wentz, really ever have a game plan going into games. And one thing that we do know about the Browns, 
especially with Nick Chubb back, is that they have an offensive game plan. They know what type of team they're going to be. They're going to run the ball down your throats, uh, down your throat. Use some, use a lot of play action, and uh, and try and beat you by grinding you down. And uh, that's just more than the than can be said for the Eagles. So uh, the way the Eagles are playing, the way the Browns can bully some teams, uh, I'm going to take the Browns at home by by three and a half. I'm going to take them as well at home. Uh... A little public service announcement for Nick Chubb. Just run it into the end zone. Don't gotta give us a bad beat by going out on the one. The Ten points is is enough. Um, but no, I, I I'm gonna take the Browns because Nick Chubb looked good coming back. That running game, um, you know, was good with them early in the year. It was good without him. It's still uh, good now, and, and so I, I think they have a big day offensively. And I'm gonna take Cleveland, uh, Carolina. Uh, there's real questions on how much offense they're going to get out of their backfield. Uh, Christian McCaffrey certainly is not going to play. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater may or may not play. Either way, the line is minus three as they host the Detroit Lions. Who do you like in this one? This game definitely comes down to me uh, whether or not Teddy Bridgewater plays. Uh, we don't really know where he is at this point in time because all we heard on Monday was that it wasn't um, – structural damage to his knee which is always good news especially considering his history but other than that we know very little so it's hard to bet on this game without knowing which way that goes but it sounds good for Bridgewater and I'm going to pick early on the fact that well not on the fact but with the idea that Bridgewater will be playing and so I would take the Panthers here if Bridgewater plays if he doesn't I I like the Lions chances a bit better Um, but I'm going to pick the Panthers. Uh, yeah, I agree. It's really tough without knowing Bridgewater's availability. Um, even if he is playing, you know, he's someone who doesn't have a lot of mobility to begin with. Uh, so if he loses any of it, part of me is like, well, can he not afford to lose any? Um, but the other part of me is like, well, he didn't have any when he played well. Um, it, I'm going to assume Bridgewater plays and the line is relatively small at minus three so I'll, I'll go with Carolina but I think we're both saying the same thing uh that until we know kind of if he's playing and and really how well he can move this is probably a stay away uh for both of us yeah. this week um, yeah and if it's PJ Walker uh under center for Carolina lean Lions I think you know we saw yes. a little bit of PJ Walker earlier this year and it wasn't pretty so I'd go Lions in that case Agreed. Agreed. um uh it, this next game is, is not necessarily a stay away in terms of betting, but certainly, you know, appointment viewing uh, in terms of watching. That's Tennessee going to Baltimore, two teams with playoff aspirations uh, who haven't got off to the best start given their their internal expectations. Um, both sitting at six and three, jockeying for positions uh, potentially in, in the playoffs um, in, with their division still up for grab. Uh, six and a half points. Baltimore is his favorite. You may notice in the tone that I'm somewhat surprised by that line. Should I be? Where are you leaning on this? I think you have good reason to be surprised for sure. I mean, both of these teams are coming off pretty um, disappointing, if not shocking losses. The Titans were a- absolutely hammered by their division rivals on, on Thursday night, mostly thanks to some really bad special teams play. Uh, but they they were dominated in terms of offensive plays as well. The Colts just got the better of them in every fashion. Uh, and then the the Ravens Patriots thing on thir- on Sunday night that that may come down to weather, but still there are a lot of questions around the Ravens offense right now and their effectiveness and their ability to change within game if things aren't going their way. And the first time we really saw that was last season against these Titans. So the the road to victory for the Titans is there. We've watched it unfold before. Um, and given the fact that the Ravens offense isn't really everything it was and they're finding, uh, finding it tough to manufacture points, I'm going to take the Titans. I think they're able to keep this one close, especially if they're able to grind it out with, with Derrick Henry. I'm taking the Titans too. I mean, we saw, uh, you know, and, and yes, weather was certainly a factor. As Bill Belichick, you know, spoke to the football gods and start to pour whenever Lamar Jackson had to pass in a big situation. 
Um, but they're 0 and 6, they being the Ravens, when trailing by 10 points, 1 and 7 when trailing at halftime. They can't throw to stay in games or, or to come back and win games. And, you know, the DNA of this team is a smash mouth football team, same as the Titans. The difference is they don't have the pieces anymore to be smashed. Now, Marshall Yonda, the longer there, Ronnie Stanley, their left tackle, which they just paid, uh, is hurt. They lost Nick Boyle, you know, probably the best blocking tight end uh, in the league to an injury uh, last week. Uh, you know, defensively, Clays Campbell is hurt. Uh, so, you know, speaking of identity, you, you mentioned it earlier, right? The Baltimore Ravens are trying to be something that they don't really have the pieces to be anymore, and they don't really have the ability to do anything else. And what they're going to see this week uh, is basically a better version of what they just saw. Mike Vrabel, defensively, coming from that Patriot tree, um, a very similar scheme than, than what the Patriots had. Because right now, even though that Tennessee defense you know, has been up and down, they certainly turn you over. Um, and, and so all of that, to me, means I think Tennessee on the road um, can certainly keep it closer than, than, than six and a half. And so I like Tennessee for sure. Speaking of those Patriots coming off, uh, you know, a, a big win for them. So they're kind of hanging around, I suppose, in the AFC East. They're not dead yet. Um, they go to Houston um, and they are favored by two and a half points uh, going to the Texans. Who do you like in this one? I picked against the Texans last week uh, in Cleveland because I don't think they have the physicality to hang with teams that really run the ball well. Uh, and we saw that unfold in Cleveland with some really bad weather. And when you think about this Patriots team with Cam Newton at the helm and now Damian Harris running the ball really well, that's what this Patriots team is. They're going to try and bully you off the line of scrimmage and they're going to try and run the ball on you as much as possible. And that's a really bad matchup for this Texans team, which has the worst run defense in the NFL. So given the way that the Patriots seem to have rebound from their four game losing streak and they're able to take advantage of teams weaknesses. I mean, that's what we say about Bill Belichick all the time, pick your weakness and exploit it. And I think that's exactly what they're going to be able to do against Houston, even though they're on the road. The other thing we say about Bill Belichick is that he kills his former assistants. And so the Texans, whether it was Bill O'Brien before or Romeo Cornell now, um, you know, he, he knows that those opponents better than anyone. And he knows, you know, how to make them, as you said, kind of play left-handed and, and make them, you know, try to do whatever they're weak at repeatedly. Uh, the Texans have a lot of things uh, that they're weak at. And so I do think uh, New England uh, will, will win this one as they start to get healthy, play a little bit better, and, and certainly start to run the ball um, with real efficiency, not just with their quarterback. Um, the Jets go to the Chargers. Uh, this is a big spread. Minus nine for the Chargers, who have two wins. That's a lot of points for a team that they themselves is not all that good. Um, it is the Jets, but is nine points too much? Nine points is too much. Um, I, I think as we start to get into the deeper parts of the season, you start to see even bad teams and prove in little ways and I think we saw that the last time we saw the Jets when they gave the Patriots a run for their money ultimately it didn't work out in their favor but it was way closer than anyone else would have expected it to be um, and while I think the Chargers are going to win this game I'm not comfortable enough to take the Chargers by that nine points considering that the Chargers have been a team historically this year who have put up big leads but then seen them slip away um, and so that that screams to me that they could be a big on the Jets, but then let them back into the game in the fourth quarter and the Jets end up covering. So I'm going to go with the Jets here just because, like I said, we get later into the into the season, the bad teams get better and uh, it ends up being a bit closer for teams like this. Yeah, this, the Jets are too bad for me. I mean, they've had big lines against them all year. We knew they were going to be bad. They've been bad. And yet still against the spread, they're just two and seven. Somehow they find a way uh, to get blown out, even uh, by teams that are not that, that good. So uh, this is probably, you know, one of the picks that I'll probably look at at around 5.05 Eastern time, one hour into the game, and think, what were you thinking? But but for now, I'm going with it. Uh, I'm, I'm going against the Jets um, more so than I'm going for the Chargers. I, I, I'm actually – go ahead. I was just going to say, it's been a good bet all year. 
you know, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's not, I wouldn't be very surprised if you find yourself in a good position at 505 either. It's been a good yeah. bet against the Jets. We'll see. I'll, I'll continue to ride them as, for as long as possible. Um, are you, you know, going to ride the two train for as long as possible? He's looked good. The Dolphins have missed a beat on the road going to Denver. There's three and a half point favorites. Who you like in this one? These are two teams going in completely different directions. Like you said, the Dolphins have won five straight. Two is playing well, or at least well enough to keep them going. He's not making mistakes. They can beat opponents in all three phases of the game. That's the big thing with the Dolphins is they can beat you on special teams. They can turn you over and turn that into points. And they're well coached. Um, and, and on the other side, the Broncos have lost three of their last four. They can't score points. They can't stop teams from scoring points. And they turn the ball over a lot as Drew Locke continues to devolve, unfortunately, into a player that doesn't look like he's going to be their franchise quarterback. And so because of all those factors, I like the Dolphins to keep their winning streak going here um, and take advantage of a team that has lots to take advantage of. I, I, I do as well. I, I like the Dolphins. They, they've been um, you know, playing well above, I think, uh, their what they thought their ceiling would be even um, this early into the Tua experience. All of their free agent signings have pretty much hit on specifically on defense. Um, they're they're going to be, you can see clearly a team to, to mess with in the AFC East for a long time. Uh, there are no teams really uh, to reckon with in the NFC East. And the best example of that is the Dallas Cowboys. They are eight point dogs going to Minnesota. Who do you look like? Last time we saw the Cowboys, I think we saw a team that's making some strides, at least defensively. Um, and they did that against the uh, then and still unbeaten Steelers. Um, Garrett, Garrett, uh, Garrett Gilbert was obviously the quarterback for that game. Um, and, he, and he looked kind of good. So it, it's almost like I was talking about with the Jets is these teams are still bad, but they start to make some strides later in the season and get to know each other a bit better and work better as a team and so i i think i'm going to go with the cowboys you can tell i'm a bit hesitant as i pause there even wondering what i'm going to do but the vikings i just don't trust enough and um i think that they're going to be able to run the ball but i don't know that i trust kirk cousins enough to be able to cover this spread i think they can win this game but i think it might end up being a little tighter than the eight points yeah i mean listen i don't trust Kirk Cousins, but Andy Dalton is like a poor man's Kirk Cousins. Uh, and and Dalvin Cook is kind of an example of, you know, the few times where you invest in a running back and it makes sense. And Ezekiel Elliott is an example of when it doesn't. And for all of those reasons, and, and you know, for also the reason that Dallas has been historically bad against the run, um, you know, I'm going to, to, to pick Minnesota in this one. You have been like slowly chipping into my lead in terms of who has the best, uh, you know, the best picks, so the best record this year. Uh, so I, I'm thankful that you've just gifted me uh, a W <laughs> so that we keep the separation um, wow. re relatively at a distance. So I, I'm going to take yeah. Minnesota and I'm, I'm going to laugh my way to the bank. Me taking the Jets and Cowboys is either going to look really brilliant next week or really yes. stupid, and you'll have doubled your lead on me. Right. Well, I mean, I, I think this our next pick, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to look really brilliant or really stupid, but to me, this one's really obvious. And so now I'm thinking, what am I missing? Green Bay going to Indy um, are two and a half point dogs. Like, are, is, is it going to be a full stadium at Lucas Oil? Am I missing something? Green Bay has the better record. You know, just the eye test to me, they, they've played um, better and a more difficult schedule. Their quarterback has certainly played better. Why are the Colts favorite? That's a really good question. And it's funny that you say that it's obvious because I I think I ended up struggling with this pick a little bit. And I think we'll both end up in the same place. But I did struggle with it at first. Uh, right off the bat, I thought Aaron Rodgers, MVP type Aaron Rodgers, um, as an underdog, give me that all day. But the more that I thought about it, and the more that I thought about that game on Thursday night in which the Colts were able to um, dominate, the Titans. I thought that this is exactly the kind of team that the Matt LaFleur Packers have struggled with. Um, think of the San Francisco 
49ers, a team that really likes to dominate up front uh, on both offense and defense, lean on the run game uh, and just play really stout defense. And that's what the Colts have. Um, they're, they're one of the best defenses in the NFL. Um, but then I kind of came to my senses again, and I think I, I have to go with Aaron Rodgers here as an underdog. Um, this might end up being a bit tighter than, you know, you and I initially expected, but I do think the Packers end up pulling this one out because of Aaron Rodgers. I, I think the Packers pull it out. And that's, you almost had me. That was an interesting comp with the 49ers. I think the difference is the 49ers at that time had multiple backs that they could rotate. Yeah, that's a big difference. That would gas you in the run game. Yep. I don't think the Colts are there. That offensive line is dominant, but that shows itself more so in pass protection uh, for the statue that is Phillip Rivers and not so much uh, in the run game. And, and so for the, all those reasons, uh, and for the for the fact that you know, Green Bay's run game is a nice compliment to Aaron Rodgers uh, to keep that Colts defense off balance, I, I'm going to pick the Packers uh, with them as a dog. Um, Kansas City, not a dog. Uh, six and a half points. Uh, is, is they're going to Las Vegas, a team that beat them earlier in the year. Uh, this is the Sunday nighter with both coaches, uh, Andy Reid um, and John Gruden, you know, you know taking some uh, shots at each other in the media. But, but what matters is what happens on the field. Who do you like in this? I really like what the Raiders are doing right now. I think we've seen John Gruden's vision kind of come to fruition now. They're a tough team that's well coached and they're running the ball better than anybody in the NFL over the last three games, all of which the Raiders have won. They're averaging nearly 200 yards on the ground per game. Um, but this is a true measuring stick for where this Raiders team is. Sure, they beat the Kansas City Chiefs earlier this year, but now they're going to try and do it again. Um, and will they show up or will Mahomes and Reed looking for some revenge blow them out of the water. I'm actually going to bet with the Raiders. I think the Raiders are finally there to give the Chiefs a little bit of a run for their money. By no means am I saying this is an equal team to the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs are the best team in football, but I think because of the rivalry and the way in which John Gruden has built this team and has them playing, I think they have the capability of keeping this close. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I love the Chiefs Fair. and Andy Reid coming off a bye. Uh, with, with time to prep for a team that they're motivated to beat because there has been some talk in the media because they already beat them. Um, that's their one loss on the year. Uh, you know, the Chiefs are outscoring opponents by an NFL best 103 points. Uh, Andy Reid is just getting bored. Like, he's putting his quarterback in motion. Uh, so giving him a week to plan uh, in a game that he's motivated for. Um, I, I like the Chiefs, and I think I think they, they try to really, really win this one, uh, you know, obviously, but, but also win it in style and send a message. They were really f fond of the Raiders doing a victory lap around Arrowhead Stadium um, in the bus after they won. So I, I think they're going to, you know, try and get them to, to warm up the bus a little early and have a big win uh, in this one. Um, it, it, these are two teams that, you know, on, t on paper, super talented, but have at times been tough to read. Uh, tough to play against on defense, and that's our Monday nighter. Uh, the Los Angeles Rams go to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, Bucks at home, three and a half point favorites, coming off of a poor performance. Uh, who do you like? I really like the Rams in this one because I think this is the exact type of defense that we've seen the Bucks struggle against this year. Um, the Bucks have been very Jekyll and Hyde. We know that they've had some really bad outings. That Saints one was one of the worst we've ever seen. Uh, but they've also come out and put up 40 burgers on teams, you know, multiple times. Uh, but the way that the Rams play defense, they've got a stout defensive line. They have 31 sacks this season. They've got one of the best cornerback duos in the NFL right now um, with, um, with Jalen Ramsey and Darius Williams. Uh, and they rank third against the the pass and fifth against the rush. I just I can see a frustrated Tom Brady in this game, um, looking really flustered as the defense dominates, kind of like it did against Seattle. Um, and so I'm going to take the Rams because of that. I think this is exactly the type of script that we've seen with the Bucks when we've been surprised that they're not dominating teams. And what was always the kryptonite in the script for Tom Brady? Getting him off the spot, whether it was the Giants in their Super Bowl wins 
for the Saints in, in their wins against them this year. It's that interior rush, that in interior pressure. Well, is there anyone better in the sport at doing that than Aaron Donald? I don't think so. Uh, so certainly, I think both of these teams, specifically defensively, are really good. The, you know, Tampa Bay 17 takeaways, tied for first, third in total defense, eighth in scoring. You know, the Rams, second in total defense, second in scoring defense, tied for third in sacks. Their defense is as good, if not better, um, and built exactly the way, as you mentioned, to stop not just the outside threat with the with the big Tampa Bay receivers, uh, but Tom Brady in the middle of the field. And that's why I like the Rams as three and a half point underdogs, uh, especially the way they've been playing recently. I, I'll, I'll take the Rams. Now, I'm not so confident that I'm going to say they're going to be a survivor pick because that would just be crazy. I'm just going to play it safe. And I'm going to stream the Jets again, which, again, might be a little bit risky given that they're playing the Chargers, but that's where I'm going. Uh, what about you? Yeah, I'm going to do the same thing. And this, uh, let's call it a win-win because I picked the Jets against the spread, but I'm going to take the Chargers and Survivor. So I'm going to win one of those, right? So give me the Chargers. I, th I still think both can happen. I think the Chargers can win and the Jets cover, but uh, I do like the Chargers to beat the Jets straight up. So you are the only person uh, that's going to be watching Chargers Jets on their big screen uh, <laughs> yes. this weekend. It's my first you really, you care. Yeah, you really care about the outcome now. Um, <laughs> we hope you enjoy this and have some good outcomes when you're betting. Continue to interact with us uh, in the comments on Twitter. Let us know who you're picking, who you got, and why. Uh, have fun, some fun watching the games this week.